here with Mike, Tuesday Talks and Tips with Mike and Freddie. Morning, folks. Uh, a lot of writers, when they're starting out, they make a list of things that they want to appear in their novel, uh, points about the protagonist, events, uh, and a common mistake they make is trying to shoehorn all that stuff in right at the beginning. You don't want to do that. You can have your list, but the point of uh, uh, the story is to draw the reader in so that he believes it's actually happening. The more credible the story, I've said this many times, the more credible the story, the more successful it will be. Uh, so you want the points you want to make, be they something about the protagonist's past, or maybe some event that's going on in modern science or politics that's going to affect him later to rise organically out of the narrative. Uh, and how do you do that? Well, you start writing. Uh, and at some point, if you're good, you're going to come to a natural opportunity to put that in. That's what you do. Uh, a lot of people uh, rely on mass media to make their points. I do it myself. Uh, you'll have an event happen like a, a, a terrorist shooting uh, and you'll introduce that event by just showing a TV screen with a talking head saying, police are still trying to deal with the aftermath of the terrorist shooting on the New York subway this morning where a madman uh, began shooting at, at uh, passengers. Fortunately, no one was killed. Um, if, uh, if it appears on a TV screen uh, where the protagonist is eating his breakfast or something, that's a fairly natural way to do it although it is a bit of a cliche, uh, and there are better ways to do it. I can't think of any right off the top of my head, but that's an example. Uh, one thing you wanna do is, is write your story realistically, and as you're walking along in your story, uh, it may, you may want to introduce character, and you don't know why, especially if your protagonist is a social animal. Uh, if he or she works in an office uh, and you show them going to work uh, and they get to the office and the, the first person they see is the officer manager Doris and, and uh, uh, the protagonist says, well, how are you this morning, Doris? And Doris says, uh, I'm a wreck. My teenage son disappeared last night and I have no idea where he went. Uh, and then the protagonist goes on and does whatever he has to do. But that, um, that tidbit of news uh, the Doris just threw into the narrative may become useful later. It always is with me. I will sometimes introduce characters towards the start of the story, and I have no idea what their purpose is until I get near the end of the story, and then I realize the purpose of these characters, and that's called resonance. And it means that you have certain themes or people that recur throughout the story and when it happens naturally, it deepens the uh, impression of verisimilitude, which means that the reader believes it more completely than if you just jam something in there, which is called du ech mahina, the ghost out of the machine. And that means uh, du ech mahina uh, means God reaches down and suddenly introduces a new element into your story. Uh, it's patently fake, it's patently obvious, uh, and you want to avoid that. And so there's really no point in memorizing the term du echt mahina, except to know what it is and stay away from it. Right, anything additional about tips on resonance and stories? Well, only this, that uh, writers are made, not born. Uh, writers are made, not born? The, yeah, and the only way to become a good writer is to write. Writers are people who have to write every day. Uh, and when you do that enough, the more you write, the more you understand what constitutes story. Well, what is story? Story is many things. Briefly, it's a dynamic narrative with a beginning, a middle, and an end. I've covered this before. By dynamic narrative, I mean the situation is always in flux. The hero is up, the hero is down. Uh, change is the only constant, because without change you have no story, you have a status quo, uh, and there's no tension, and stories are all based on tension and release. Right. Um, 
So the more you write, the more you understand story, and story can be many things. It can be a plot development, uh, like a talking head on the news saying that there was a terrorist shooting in the subway, or it could be revealing that the uh, protagonist has a, a peculiar habit, uh, always double tying his shoes, which may become important in the story later. And, and when you do that, when you show the protagonist's peculiar habit, uh, like always carrying a pocket knife, that's a good one. Uh, and you know, most men do carry a pocket knife. I don't have a pocket knife right now. I have Freddy and he will bite something for me. Uh, but no, but <laughs> protagonists who say, who carry a pocket knife, they may find a use for it later on. And that, that's a perfect example of resonance in a story. Just adding little habits that the protagonist has and how they will bear on the story later on. Uh, another protagonist uh, might be uh, a woman <coughs> who's me. deathly afraid of sugar, but she wants a sweetener in her drink. So she goes from sweetener to sweetener. Now it may be that some evil person wants to poison her by putting what appears to be sugar in her drink and taking a box of sugar and say, would you like sugar like this? And she says, no. Okay, cool. Well, those are great tips. We'll continue on with them. Freddie, do you have anything to say? All right. Thank you. Like, subscribe, comment. Much appreciated.